right. Welcome to uh, Lo-Fi Lounge, and I wanted to talk with John from uh, Corita about this album right here, Freeway Junkie Queen. But you know, there's the there's the thing about the, the kind of second album syndrome. You know, uh, there's no symptoms of the second album syndrome on this album. Some of the al- some of the songs on the second album were written close to on the heels of the songs that made the first one. They mm-hmm. came, they they didn't come much later than that. And in fact, several of them we played even at our first show that we ever did once yeah. things started to open up. So a few of them were around. The sound has uh, the sound of the band in general. It, we have more songs that we play live now that are on either album, and the sound is evolving even past this one. Right. So the band's got multiple different kinds of influences that it taps into. The first ones, without pigeonholing too much, all country kind of some rock, obviously, and some uh some country funk kind of stuff uh-huh. and the second one gets a little more indie rock a little edgier in some places we stretch out a little further in a couple of places and the third one yeah, i think is even well the what would you know what would be the next phase going into a third album um i think is even more in that garage rock rock kind of dream pop sort of it's just it's evolving even more but with chuck's voice and lyrics it's always going to have a, a, some kind of southern twang to it no matter what but i can go out and dance in california tonight yeah we'll all go dance in california tonight and you know, even from the first song, you know, uh, the radio DJ, some of his Springsteen self. We had fun talking that yeah. first time with Chuck. Uh, it just yeah. his, his Springsteen connections. I go, oh, this is a little bit like, a, you know, Radio Nowhere to start off, a, you know, with with a bang, you know, to start off on a, on a, you know, yeah. a, power, a power note. Uh, and, it's, you know, just a tiny bit of, an homage, but you but you do stuff with it. You have that radio static at the beginning, and then that beat just coming in. And I think a lot of what happens with this second album is you kind of you kind of throw down the gauntlet about the sound. So the first album, you know, we went in, we were just going with what we had, and Greg from the Mother Hips, Greg Loicano with the Mother Hips, produced both. So he was the overseer of both. But the first one was recorded at Coyote Hearing in Oakland, and uh, Chuck Gonzalez engineered it, and then uh, David Simon Baker mixed it, and that's just you know it's just different human beings it's got its own sound and and we love it it worked great the second one was at uh, a studio called space camp up in northern california in the redwoods kind of in the wine country yeah. and it, it, dave schools from widespread panic owns it and he was a fan of the first album and he knows greg and he knows chuck a little bit and stuff and he invited us well, we were in, you know, and the engineer's name is Jason Reed. And that's, um, he's a kind of the caretaker of the studio. And he's Dave's right-hand man. And they were like, yes, bring Karita up here for another, we, we're, you know, we're, we like what they're doing. And uh, so we went there and Jason as an engineer um, 
he's he's brilliant. He's got a wide kind of like us, a wide range of influences, and he's got a lot of gadgets and he knows how to use them. And he could get very creative. He's like another band member in the studio. And in fact, laid down some synthesizer and some keyboards on uh, on a couple of tracks. And uh, and and then Dave School plays bass on the whole record, which is was awesome. But yes, we wanted a song like Bandit to have a little more reverb drenched into it and give it a little of that replacements or stone roses kind of feel to it. She was born on the beaches, man, just out of reach of all them. The title track's great with with and then we were lucky enough where Jerry Joseph sat in and did some kind of a companion vocal part on it, which was really cool and interesting. And then oh, now we're gonna be doing a bunch of shows with them. Down at the taco stand, down at the taco stand, just a lick in my leg. We're fans of Jerry Joseph. He's a great songwriter. He's a great rock and roller. He's a great folk singer and writer as well. Mm -hmm. And he knows Dave Schools really well. And he knows because of he widespread paddocks covered a lot of his songs. And then they, you know, they'll jam on stage and things. Greg introduced us to him. Or uh, actually he he talked to Jerry and sent him you know some of our stuff and jerry was into it and he and you know we were interested in seeing if he was interested in doing something sometime yeah. and so he got in touch and uh he got excited he he, lo he really liked the first album and we sent him what we had of the second album at that point right. since then we had gone we went to see him play he he was like why don't you come see us see he was in san diego like a year ago yeah to come come to the show so we so three of us went down to the show and we talked to him afterwards and he's really cool. And, you know, we we're kind of, it was small talk and casual conversation, but kind of starting to scheme, like maybe we could do something. And what's really cool is we're going to be his band. So we're going to play and he's going to join us, you know, on freeway junkie queen. And then we're going to back him for his, his show too on, on all these seven shows that we have scheduled. So we're, we're really excited about that. We love his songs. His last couple albums are great. And that's where a lot of the materials stemming from for the shows. And plus a couple of classic, of his classic tunes come out and, and check it out. I think they're going to see something different and interesting and unique and, and definitely with a lot of energy and spirit to it. I'm kind of like, have a never ending fascination with the whole process from playing, learning a song in your guitar in your living room to writing a song with your bandmates to recording it to mixing it to releasing it to playing it live to playing with other people to going on tour and all that. It, it's music such a, it's a thing we all love. But that and it's a finicky thing too. What what sits right with somebody's ears? It's all subjective too. Yeah. What some person thinks is great, some person might not get or be into. Or why does everybody like a certain? You know, why does everybody like Tom Petty? You know, it's yeah. like, like and some people, it's you know they don't get it or or whatever or yeah. certain yeah. albums. You know, then there's albums that land like. You know, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot by Wilco. Mm -hmm. the Warner didn't want to carry it. Right. And then it ends up being their biggest selling album. And they ended up putting it on a subsidiary label anyway. And they got their own record deal later because they did so well with it on their own. And it's you know, now an iconic 
all time great. You know, Exile on Main Street was not the Rolling Stones most popular or reviewed album when it was released. It got panned a lot. And I think it's the best rock and roll album of all, all time. Music is it's the, a never ending journey when you really dive into it and, and try to see what people are doing and um, how they write. And it's fascinating to me. And yeah, we, we just try to do our part, mixing it up. Yeah, you look like, it's like a thread, you know, you, you guys seem to appreciate textures of things. And he's like, we're, we're going to pull a thread <laughs> from this texture and it gets woven. And it sounds like you guys have fun as a band or it would be a fun band to be in. There's a lot of creativity. Definitely a lot of creativity. Absolutely. You know, but we, we take it very serious and have a high bar for ourselves as a musical standard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we just want to be the best we can be, whatever, whatever that is. And um, we're proud of the first two albums. I think that they've done what they're supposed to do. And I, I think a third one will add to the catalog accordingly as well. Thank you. 